Last month I uploaded a video to YouTube where I showed what it was like to fly a quad in OpenHD and this was successful enough video from my point of view but I did notice in my first couple of flights I had a lot of interference and it can be seen in uh, the, the lost number of packets which came out about 7%. Now in the very third flight I did which was the, the last battery for some reason this suddenly came good, the lost packet ratio dropped down a lot more and we had a much better experience with uh, a lot less interference which was really nice and of course I wanted to have that experience of the third battery on all my batteries so what I want to try and do in this video is fix those problems so my first port of call was to go into the OpenHD Discord group and look for ideas about what might be the problem so what I got from those conversations and thanks once again to everybody in the OpenHD community that hangs out on Discord and is helping me is a change of frequency. This is the config file we use. Um, it'll be quite familiar to anybody using Linux because it is actually a bash shell. Um, normally frequency would be set to auto and it just connects in what it likes. For the UK one of the guys there, Mario FPV, thanks to him especially, found that there was possible interference from other things and he found that 5320 was the cleanest frequency going. So I thought, yep, that's good enough for me, let's do that. He also suggested upping the power of my TX um, air and ground to 58, which was on 54 before and I've no idea what that means in terms of milliwatts or anything and don't forget these are going to look a little different than if you're flying analog fpv because these are wi-fi frequencies rather than analog uh, fpv frequencies anyway so that seemed like a simple change so i changed it on the the air and the ground pipe and went out and tried again here's a very good reason to test on the bench before you get out here um, there's quite a lot of stuff to sit up here all bits and pieces lots to bring uh, along with me i've just switched this on we've waited at this point we would expect this guy to be showing me some information but we've got nothing from the air pie so um it might be that i cocked up my config file and i hadn't checked so my fault stupid me uh i'll go back and check it at home and see what the problem is and here's what the problem was it's this usb extension and it's a, a pretty nice one actually it's made by asus it comes with that wi-fi adapter and um, i was using it to try and get my wi-fi adapter up to a decent spot and it was working fine and this took a best part of a week to get this because everything seems to be working absolutely fine and i was changing configs I was retesting every single different component and it just happened that i plugged it in once and i was capturing the output and it suddenly said Wi-Fi adapter not found and I thought that's weird let me try plugging it in directly everything suddenly came up perfectly so either um, perhaps a break or problem in the cable or the Pi just wasn't able to push that power through that larger cable or something like that anyway lesson learned don't use an extension cable let's try again okay open HD try number two you will notice a quick couple of config changes I have lost that USB extension because it was obviously giving me problems and this is now stood up on its own. Picture through there, that's per normal. Uh, goggles plugged in, quads are waiting to go, just waiting for some sats to pick up and, uh, and we should be good. Other slight difference is I'm using the Zorro with the uh, Beta FPV 868 module uh, because then I only have to take one radio back to fly lots of stuff and I'm using the Zorro at the moment. So yeah, let's hope the changes we made and big thanks to Marriott FPV for helping with that will give a more consistent clearer picture. I'm still worried about like all my cables kind of jumbled up but we'll see what we get. Let's give it a fly. Well I waited around for satellites I didn't seem to get them meanwhile the little air pie was heating up a bit so I thought let's just get up and fly around and we'll see what's going on. Now the thing to look for once again to see if this has improved is the loss ratio. There's always going to be lost packets and delayed packets, but that actual ratio, which was previously in its worst 7%, and when it got good, dropped to 2%, is what I'm looking for. We're still getting little flashes of interference, but I've noticed we're sort of stuck on 0%. Obviously, it's not 0%, because you can see like the 700-odd packets that have, have been lost, but as a percentage of the amount we're sending, obviously we've got enough error recovery to give ourselves a nice image so this is actually going really nicely so perhaps we've finally cracked the issue of what's going on with stuff 
in terms of having uh, interference and things. Obviously, there's always lots and lots still to do on this one. I mean, last time I at least had the um, satellites picking up, so this time all you can see is the altitude on the right-hand side there from my barometer and nothing on my left-hand uh, side for the altitude. I, I have actually put the lat long on the screen here with the intention of covering it up if I have to. The reason for that is I realised it's it's all very well having a lat and long position in my screen but if it crashed then I don't think I can remember two very long strings of numbers like that so I can put it in my DVR and if we got a crash where I'm not sure what happened we can at least go and get it by reviewing the DVR. Now an unexpected problem here, bearing in mind it's about five or six degrees Celsius, is that the sun is shining to a point, and I'm sort of away from any wind and stuff, that it's actually really warm. And my big box goggles have managed to completely fog up. So I'm having to bring the quad down here to land it and clean my goggles off just so I can see, because it's kind of like looking through uh, fog at the moment. It's it's not looking very good at all. So. I'm just going to bring this down, clean my goggles off, and then we'll get back up in the air. Unfortunately, I'm using these larger box goggles because uh, they've got a native 1080p panel and I've only got Dominator 3 Fat Sharks, which have 640 by 480 screens, but they do have a fan. That said, in this position where I was, I was sort of getting quite sweaty with all my layers on, um, I had steaming up from those goggles as well. I did want to talk about goggles because one of the things I noted in terms of what would I like to use going forward, what would be the best goggles. Obviously you've got the various HDOs from Fat Shark and they've got a proper HD panel and an HDMI in. But the, the other problem I wanted to try and eliminate is having my little tablet to do the DVR recording. So potentially the best goggles right now I think for OpenHD are going to be the new Orcas which they've kind of made with different HD versions in mind and one of the things I know it does is it can record from the HDMI in so you could wear these goggles um, with your HDMI cable from your Pi and record DVR footage to it at the same time so that's potentially a good thing if anyone's got those goggles and is flying open HD I'd be really keen to know how they uh, how their experience was they're a little bit pricey for me at the moment but you know we live in hope Anyway, I'm just getting on with the flying, and it's generally pretty good. As I said, we've got some little sort of flickers of um, interference, but our loss packet ratio is still at 0%. So um, I think we've, we're on to a certain winner with the changes I've made. As I said, these are not universal changes. These are changes for the UK, and if you're somewhere else in the world, then these won't work as well for you. Now this is where our tail goes a little bit south because I was just enjoying flying around and one thing I do when I fly around is you know I do a little bit of acro. I'm no sort of acro master but you know I like doing the odd roll and flip and stuff and uh, this is what we did. And then I went ahead and I said let's do a roll and this is what happens. The entire display froze, I realise I'm upside down and there is pretty much nothing I can do at that height knowing it's going to go into the ground. If this has happened a, a little distance away and I wasn't upside down then obviously I would have just flicked the rescue button or angle or something like that. But in this situation it's definitely crashed. And as much as I'd like to show you a spectacular HD crash I'm afraid the entire display just froze and that's all I had. Well I don't think that's going to be pretty. Um, we had some sort of freeze up at the top of a loop and um, well yeah we just had to let it go down there was no sort of recovering from that one in time so not sure where it is <laughs> this is the thing let's have a search in the field and see if we can find a wreckage and I think it's going to be a wreckage because it's a big old bird coming down uh, just like a bit of a stone really hopefully it was in this part of the field and uh, we can locate it. Well, couldn't find it until I started using that minus dB thing, basing it on like, the lower the number goes, the better. And uh, we got quite a directional antenna. So, what's happened? 
Ugh. Well, uh, I don't know what happened first, but good news is we've still got our Wi-Fi adapter. Let's just unplug the battery. Uh. Last. We've still got our expensive camera and we've still got the pie so it's all it's all there and nothing broken apart from the antenna got a bit chewed up. Uh, I'm guessing one of those loops maybe loosened off this dude and he uh, perhaps came out of out of whack and that took the whole thing down but surprisingly little damage. Okay so now we've got it back and couple bits more of damage and it's it's like what came first and what went with the damage obviously the wi-fi adapter came out and it looks like there was maybe a prop strike on that i'm just trying to look for a thing there but i can't see one so that may have happened after the event but something happened when i did that loop and what i did find is that we didn't have the uh cable for the camera adapter anymore it's here and this pie got ripped forwards. Again, this might have been in the uh, in the crash, but it definitely looks like that got hit there. You can see a couple of pins bent, we need to sort that out. And so we've got a damaged cable there, which obviously ripped out. It looks like it pulled out from there. I can't see any damage on that one, I'm happy to say, because that's the expensive bit. Uh, but yeah, we got it all back and I think, you know, this will fly again, give it a little bit. We've got a little couple of bits to replace. But I think the, the lesson learned here is, of course, this is a little bit fragile, how I built it, because it's like that's on the side. This is plugged in via this little cable. It's not for flipping around and doing things with. I, I need to be a little bit more gentle when I'm flying it. On the plus side, um, I don't think, I, I think our like loss ratio was very small on that. So good news there. But uh, we'll rebuild this and uh, we'll fly it again and uh, we'll live and learn from our mistakes. Now, as soon as I got home, I took this apart because I wanted to check that the expensive components still worked. The camera, which was like 60 something pounds, thank goodness that was fine. And the connector where it was uh, in was fine, as was the Wi-Fi adapter, which was like 40 odd quid. That, those are the expensive parts of uh, OpenHD, unfortunately. So I took another good look at what happened and I can only speculate to a certain amount, but I feel it's quite educated guessing, if you like. At first I thought maybe we've got a prop strike on our USB uh, adapter. This was all crashed and there was one little tiny slit in this cable, but it didn't look like the whole thing had been really hit. That would have chopped it a bit better. Um, and then what I did is I, I took a really good look at how this had uh, been damaged. And you can see from the photos that the the camera pins here had been pushed right up and this had obviously been dragged forwards and the pins bent. Now in a crash, although there might be a little bit of movement in it, it's very light. It doesn't have that um, kinetic energy to push itself forward enough to bend things. So I figured it must have been pulled through. And what I'm thinking has happened is this was the, the mangled camera cable and this would have been sitting in here and you can see how much clearance we've got there between that 3D printed mount and the blade. There's, there's not much at all. And what I would have had is uh, this cable there going behind that into there. So there was, there was some spare cable about and if that spare cable got there, then the prop could have hit that cable, pulled that forwards uh, which would have pulled the board at some force um, and bent those pins and then on the next uh, hit round of one of the props it would have clonked that and, and broke it into uh, well many pieces as it did. I think that's what's happened um, which explained why I lost complete picture very quickly because basically the camera was taken out along with probably the pie as it as it went through there. I also didn't realise at the time when I was looking for stuff that the GPS, which would normally be sitting here, was missing. I I went back and I had a look for it. I couldn't see it. Uh, to be fair, I was like a couple of hundred yards away from where I sort of, sort of sitting. And if I'd have had a good look at the time, I might have found it, but it was a small thing in a lot of grass, high grass. So that makes it hard to find. There's a possibility of getting that uh, GPS receiver back. That field is where a lot of metal detectorists go 
because there's some old Roman ruins around and they occasionally find coins. And if there's anything modern, they give it to uh, the Graham, who's the farmer there, and just in case it's dropped off his tractor or something. So fingers crossed, we might get that back. But that's not the expensive part. There was a, a, a bit of a pain as well. In terms of trying to check everything worked, I straightened the pins out here and I plugged this in to see if it was okay. And it got so hot, it, there was some glue on the back, some hot glue just protecting some contacts, and it melted. So whatever happened to this has caused some sort of short, and that has just made it turn into this uh, massive heating up object which now doesn't run. Now this isn't a particular pain. In terms of the expensive stuff versus the cheap stuff, it's the cheap stuff that broke. The GPS is like 10, 10 bucks, 10 pounds, whatever. You can buy a Raspberry Pi Zero and it's just uh, the normal Zero, I think the Zero W. Um, it's basically the one with the camera connector, I don't need the pins, for under five pounds. However, you just cannot buy them at the moment. Every single place is out of stock of Pi Zeros. The Pi Zero 2 just came out, so I kind of expected that to be busy, but what happened is they ceased production of the original Pi Zero in order to make these other ones, and nowhere is in stock. So I'm a bit stuck for repairing this at the moment until I can get a replacement one of these, which is a pain because this is cheap as chips. The original Pi Zero was given away of a magazine in the UK. That's how cheap they were. <laughs> they were bundling them with magazines, but now you can't get them um, unless you want to pay stupid money on like eBay, which I, I'm not going to do. So I'll have to wait for that. But in the meantime, I thought, you know what? I really should think about a different frame here because obviously the, the space we've got there between the prop and this side bit is not very good. What we want is a quad with a, just a longer base where I can put the Pi Zero, enclose it in something and not have all these flary cables around. So that's what I'm going to try and do for next time, as soon as I can get a Pi Zero. In the meantime, as far as OpenHD goes, I have just about finished this uh, wing. This is going to use the Oaken board with a Pi Compute Module 4 and OpenHD. Uh, that still has to be completed and it's quite possible I might fly analog first just to make sure I get the INF configuration going okay. But in the meantime I hope that's been helpful and of course if anybody finds any uh, Pi Zeros in the UK for normal price that are in stock let me know down in the comments below and I can get on and, and do some more flying on that. Anyway catch you next video. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.